This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. Welcome back. Historically, Missouri was a grassland dominated state. These native grasslands included prairies, savannas, wet prairies and woodlands. Now to learn more about this, we have John Murphy with the Missouri Department of Conservation uh, here this morning to talk more about native grasslands and how to establish them on your land. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me out. Well, thanks for coming on. So first of all, tell us a little bit more and tell us uh, exactly what is a native prairie. Well, as you mentioned, you know, Missouri was dominated by native grasslands. Mm -hmm. And so that is a, a suite of species uh, of plants mm -hmm. and animals but also fung fungus and uh, different types of bacteria in the soil that uh, made it one of the most fertile places in the world. And mm -hmm. that was kind of its own undoing. You've heard of uh, the Great Plains being the breadbasket mm -hmm. of, uh, of America, and that's, it was because of native prairie and those rich, deep soils and the plant life and the organic life that was there mm -hmm. uh, that made it that breadbasket of mm -hmm. America. And uh, right now, uh, we are we have less than one percent wow. of native prairie remnant prairie left in Missouri, and so those are those are very rare kind of precious gems that we find. And in North Missouri, it's been a privilege to work out here because we do have some really neat native prairies in North Missouri. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about, I mean, a lot of times we address native prairies and and the wildlife habitat. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about what what benefits does native prairie have for wildlife. But I wanted to talk about some other, what we call, uh, services mm -hmm. that Native Prairie provides um, on the landscape. And to do that, I think we need to talk a little bit about the biology of the prairie plants. And I'm going to focus a little bit on the plants this morning. So when we talk about uh, the biology of some of these native plants, mm -hmm. one of the things is the way they grow and how um, they utilize the environment around them. Mm -hmm. So native plants have a root system. One of the things they have is a root system that's totally different from some of our exotic species. Mm -hmm. And we have a picture of, there was a fascinating article in National Geographic about a year ago. Mm -hmm. A gentleman in Kansas was use, utilizing some neat techniques mm -hmm. to get pictures of the root mass of some of the native plants that we have. And he, you know, the picture we have here, he has an example of some Indian grass, which is native prairie grass, mm -hmm. and compass plant, and I brought in some compass plant today. They have a root system that can go 10 to 15 feet in the ground, wow. as opposed to some of our exotic sods, which go 10 to 12 inches in mm -hmm. the ground, okay? Well, what that does for you, let's just talk a little bit about hydrology and water flow. What that does for us is they have access to a lot more of the soil profile going up and down. And so they do a lot better job of allowing water to mm -hmm. percolate into the, into the soil, mm -hmm. okay? And there's recently there was some really good work um, a couple years ago done by the USGS in Missouri and Kansas to show that watersheds that have native plants in them, that have mm -hmm. native prairie in those watersheds, mediate stream flow mm -hmm. and water quality a lot b better than say exotic species mm -hmm. okay so what i mean by that is because these root systems that these native plants have because mm -hmm. of those um, they are allowing the water rainfall to store better and not run off as mm -hmm. dramatically so you don't have as dramatic a, a, a flood events as say you do if it's hitting something solid or even exotic species but also, you know, how we talk about a lot of times we're two weeks away from a drought. And one of the reasons is is because that water scoots off the landscape and our water table is lower in watersheds where we have exotic species as opposed to native prairie. Mm -hmm. So when we have those droughty situations in those prairie landscapes, the water flow in these prairie streams, you know, it doesn't dry up as quick. So we have a little, we have more recharge in our water table when we have native plants on the landscape mm -hmm. than if we have exotics. So not only is it doing a better job when the rainfall hits the ground, it's doing a better job of sponging that up mm -hmm. and storing it so we don't have those uh, as dramatic of flood events. I mean, mm -hmm. you get you get flooding, especially in some serious rainfall, but we don't have as dramatic. 
Right. And, and also when it gets droughty, mm -hmm. we don't have as dramatic a, of these prairie streams drying up as quickly. So mm -hmm. we get better water recharge on mm -hmm. the landscape, which has a whole, uh, a whole suite of benefits right. um, to us as Missourians. So, so if somebody is interested in possibly maybe learning more or maybe having um, some sort of a native prairie or this type of vegetation on their land, how do they get in contact? Where do they go to learn more? Well, there, yeah, that brings up a good point. So there's two things that you can find. Some folks are blessed with they have native prairie on there and they don't know how to manage it. Mm -hmm. And some folks would like to restore it. So the Department of Conservation has an entire division of private land biologists, which, uh, which I am that um, all we do is help private landowners manage it. So that if they can contact their local Missouri Department of Conservation, mm -hmm. every county has a private land conservationist in, for that assigned to that county, that we would be glad to provide that technical assistance to them. Okay, so what we'll do to make it easier for everyone is we'll post everything on our website at ktvo.com. We'll link up information with the Missouri Department of Conservation. Again, thank you so much, John, for coming on. Thanks for having me. And we'll be right back.